Okay, let's uh, move on to a different topic, still focusing around character development. Self-esteem is something that everyone wants, right. but it seems to be uh, lacking in a lot of people, especially young people, especially right. in the social media world right. where people feel such a um, pressure to have to compete with other people, right. to look the best, to be the best, to be the most right. successful. What do you think are the most important tools to have healthy self-esteem? So, self-estimation of what I'm worth, mm. it's uh, very similar to happiness because it's elusive. That means to say, if we're being sold on a definition that's not uh, true to our inner selves, the way we were created, the way we were designed, then I'm always going to be lacking. So I'll give you an example. Um, there, are, there are actors and actresses, baseball players, basketball players. There are people in, in the world of science and arts, theatre, in every walk of life who have reached the absolute zenith, the, the top area of expertise in their speciality. And yet, what you will find as a pattern is that extremely frequently they're very unhappy. And there's a very simple explanation, it's not mysterious. Um, you have actors, for example, who are extremely unhappy, actresses. And what's that explanation? You can have uh, a Michael Jordan, you can, you can have so many people who they're, they're searching for much more than they've already gotten. They're already billionaires, they're extremely famous, extremely adored. You can have a comedian who is so funny that hundreds of millions of people adore him around the world and he'll take his life, he'll commit suicide. Robin Williams, how, how's that possible? So the, the sad reality is that what happens if a person's extremely famous and very wealthy and um, has reached pretty much the, the top in his field, how will people relate to him as what's who's, in their mind, what's his true worth? So they'll walk into a restaurant and they'll meet um, a famous actor. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm in, this, in the same restaurant. Is it really you? Is it true you do your own stunts? And, no. uh, so how, how is everyone relating to them? As who they are inside or who are they on screen? Who are they as a person or who they are for the PhD that they've been awarded or their position they hold in government? And what you invariably will yeah. find that they realize that people yeah. look at me for what I'm worth on paper, yeah. whether it's the money or the fame and or the amount find, of films. And you find, by the way, that pop stars, today, some of them aren't even liked because of their voices, but actually just because of how they look. It's not even their, their, their musical abilities. So the bottom, this is the, the you pointed it really out, the, the bottom line is that um, true self-esteem is correlated directly to how much I love myself, look at the good in myself, count the good in myself, and how much I look at the good in other people and say so. How much I'm getting along with other people. Um, it's very common for someone who's either becomes extremely wealthy or famous um, or an expert in their area that instead of their self-esteem actually improving, what's actually improved is maybe their confidence in their ability in that area. But that has no correlation to self-esteem because true self-esteem is how do I get along with myself and others. But what, what do you, when you talk about loving yourself, right. loving what about yourself? Anything, anything that is, has to do with intrinsic value. So for example, patience, uh, listening, empathy, compassion, understanding, sensitivity, um, respect, admiration, appreciation, gratitude. All those are inter internal values. In Hebrew, mm. they're, called, they're called midot, which interestingly actually has two meanings. It means character. The word midot means character. It also means measure. Because according to God, the true measure of a human being is not how much money I make. It's not the position I hold in the corporate world. It's not the profession I am in or the corporate position I'm in or the size of my home or my car or anything else. The, the true measure of a human being is who's, what am I in character? Hmm. And it's, it's when we control our character, we control our patience, we control our listening, we control our mouths and what we think that gives us true self-estimation because that's power being in control of myself, that's real power. And it's very dangerous when people are sort of dependent on how other people perceive them. Right. And that's, to get their self esteem. And that's what the world has, has sold to us, mm. that for you to be successful, uh, ultimately it's, it's um, 
how many people do you yeah. influence? And that's what social and media is. How many likes do I get? How many shares do I get? It, people are basing their happiness on how much other people will like the image right. that they have right. of themselves. And when they wake up realizing, not consciously necessarily, that um, the number of hits I've got or how many shares, etc., cetera, um, has not changed me intrinsically. I may have got a kick for a few moments or I can boast and say, but if I haven't changed internally, self-estimation, true self-esteem has not only not necessarily has not only not necessarily improved, it's actually got worse because the wrong definition is being reinforced. Mm. And the true definition of how much I love myself, admire other people, appreciate, I'm grateful for the people that have done good in my life, uh, that's true self-estimation. And people love people who are like that. Mm. That's the real measure of it. So do you think you can have self-esteem if you're not loved by anyone? If you, if you love yourself, uh, deeply for your true um, uh, virtues and, and qualities, then it's not dependent on receiving it from others. Do you think you need to believe that there is uh, a sort of a all-powerful creator, a God out there that loves you, that created you for a purpose in order to have self-esteem? So, I mean, we, we, can, we can go in that direction. King David, um, till the age of 29, he was assumed to be a mumser, a bastard, by his own family. Uh, married out of uh, a child that was born out of wedlock. Mm. Um, he was disdained by all his brothers. King David was a shepherd and he was the black sheep of the family, literally, until 29 when he was actually coronated as king by uh, Samuel the, the prophet. But up until that point, um, he was completely alone. And yet he had a deep love for God and creation and even to the extent that he, on one occasion, for example, he was accused of being a thief of someone's property. And in court, there were no witnesses to uh, prove otherwise. Um, he was made to pay. And his reaction was he prayed to God to forgive that person. Wow. And, and he himself forgave him with a full heart. So here's someone who ha has been given an opportunity to be bitter and angry and perhaps even really uh, resentful and wanting to take revenge and no one loves me my family there's completely no one <laughs> cares about me and and yet he turns it around and says you know god uh just forgive him i forgive him you can't be more compassionate than me could you mm. um and he does this throughout his life consistently mm. um he he lost four children in his lifetime he is pursued by his own father-in-law his own wife michal didn't fully appreciate who she who she was married to when she sees him dancing wild in front of the Ark of the, the Torah, the Holy Covenant, and she thinks he's denigrating himself in front of the maidservants and the uh, servants, and, and really he was just drunk with joy. Mm. And I think he's probably the ex most excellent example to, to quote because in the Christian world, his psalms are sung every Sunday yeah. morning by hundreds of millions of people. Yeah. And that's in a language which is not even the original Hebrew, where the translation is not accurate. But his message in 150 love songs is all about my relationship with God, nobody can take away from me. No matter how bad things go, I could lose one kid, two kids, three kids, four kids. I could have a son that rebels against me. I can have a father-in-law who att attempts assassination of me. I can have a wife who doesn't fully appreciate me. I can have a family that didn't believe that uh, in, in their wildest dreams that I would be chosen to be the king of the Jewish people. Mm. So here you have a person who went through literally hell on earth and yet was able to come up with the most common statement out of 150 paragraphs of his love songs to God in his Psalms, Hodu Ladunai Kitov, Kila Olam Chazdo. Thank you, God. Thank you, God? What? What are you grateful to God for? Look, look at what you've been through. No, you know why I'm grateful? Kitov, because God's good. Oh, give me a break. Look at how much you've suffered. So King David will have to say, well, yeah, but that, you have to finish the sentence. You see, if I'm going to complain to God, which he, he was honest about his pain, mm -hmm. There's a, a, a famous verse in chapter 119. You can always quote that one if you're not sure because it's the longest. But uh, <laughs> in that chapter, he says, Dalfa nafshi mituga, my soul drips with agony. We don't even have the proper words in English to fully capture the incredible poetry which he was able to adopt in describing his negative emotions. Mm. His soul was dripping with agony, and yet simultaneously he will tell you, 
I'm grateful to God because he's good. Why? Because if I'm going to tell you what's not good in my life and in the kingdom and with my wife and my father-in-law and the kids, then I've got to also be grateful for the good that's in my life. Mm. And that's where he found himself in a quandary. Because the moment he starts thanking God for the good, he couldn't stop recognizing how much kindness was done to him that it just went on and on and on. So people around the whole world, when they get hold of Psalms, they say, oh my God, these words talk to me. Mm. I go through my hell on earth. I'm going through my difficulties in my life, in my health and finances and uh, children, etc. And here's someone who's honest and real and he still has a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Was that still tying into self-esteem? King David had every reason to accept that the frame of reference of everybody else about who he was is reality and therefore I should feel very low about myself. And yet he wasn't dependent on their recognition. To the contrary, he didn't have recognition and yet he had tremendous self-esteem because of his relationship with God, which as you brought out, oh, if you've got a religious element here, which means I've got a relationship with an all-powerful creator mm. and that gives possible meaning to anything I would ever go through, mm. oh, it becomes meaningful. Even more meaningful, yeah. yeah. And then I can be happy because there's meaning in my life. Yeah. To stay up to date with the latest JCV content, if you're on YouTube, click subscribe below the video and the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, click the like button and under following, click see first.